Just like smartphones, smartphone gimbals come in a variety of sizes. While some of them are more heavy duty, the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 belongs in the lightweight category. For that reason, it's an excellent choice for video shooters on the move, who don't want to get weighed down with bulky kit. Now, the app which comes with the gimbal actually has a feature which is great for beginners to learn filmmaking. It actually replicates an exercise I sometimes set students when teaching smartphone filmmaking, but we'll get to that later. First, let's walk through the basic setup of the Osmo Mobile 3. Mobile 3 is DJI's latest update to their very popular Osmo Mobile Gimbal series. But this one is smaller, more lightweight and also foldable. Unlike the Osmo Mobile 2, the new version only has top and bottom clamp grips. This means your headphone socket is free if you want to add a microphone. If you pay a few dollars more, the Osmo Mobile 3 comes with a detachable tripod base. So you can use this to film with, and you can fold up the legs to make a grip, or you can simply use it as a stand while the gimbal is not in use. Now the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 is a foldable gimbal. So once you've got it out of the box, the first thing you can do is unfold it. The gimbal basically has a simple hinge, which allows it to flip open. To close it again, the middle axis has to be aligned correctly, so that it all clicks together nicely. On the top of the gimbal is a sticker with some quick start instructions, so you can remove that and keep it if you want to refer to it later. There's also some anti-slip pads which come with the gimbal. Presumably if your phone is small and slips, then you can add these pads to get a firmer grip. If you don't need them, you can add those to the drawer of things which might be needed one day, which contains the power supply of your first Nokia mobile phone, even though you threw that phone away 18 years ago. To power up the gimbal, press the M button on the control panel until the left LED turns solid green. But before you can use the gimbal, it needs to be activated using the DJI MIMO app. In fact, I think the gimbal won't function at all until you have done this. To connect your smartphone to the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, Bluetooth must be enabled. After you download DJI MIMO, well, the first thing you do is open it. You may be asked for permissions to access features features on your smartphone device. Then a resource file loads. Once you have given any permissions required, you find yourself in the MIMO app and it shows you a quick overview. If you tap the Osmo Mobile 3 tab, you are shown a series of what appear to be promotional videos, but I think I'll skip those for now. Before you switch on your gimbal, DJI recommends you mount your smartphone first. Otherwise, the arm might fly around a bit. Make sure the DJI logo faces towards you. Now make sure your smartphone camera is on the left, but then flip the phone so the camera faces away from you. It might help to remember that the camera of your smartphone should be on the same side as the D in the DJI logo. There's also a sticker here, but most likely you'll want to remove that. Alternatively, you can mount your smartphone while the gimbal is still folded, like so. This can actually be a little bit easier, and you can hold the gimbal in one hand and mount the phone with the other. One thing I noticed, the buttons on my Samsung S9 are very close, or in fact, slightly underneath the gimbal grip. I was a bit worried the clamp would press down on the buttons and cause problems, but with my phone balanced, the buttons were just safe. With previous models of DJI Gimbal, you had to adjust the length of the gimbal arm to balance the phone in the gimbal. But now, without the end clamp, you only need to shift the device left and right until the weight is central. The Osmo Mobile 3 can also be balanced in a vertical position to really fine-tune your phone's position in the gimbal. Having your smartphone perfectly balanced will cause less stress and wear and tear on the gimbal's motors. Turn the phone so it rests in the gimbal vertically. If the phone falls to one side, then adjust the position of the clamp left to right. Now, the app takes you through a series of steps to activate, which includes registering with your email if you haven't done so already. The app 
then shows you a range of quick start pages which you can flip through. I wonder if you can see these again later because they actually look quite useful. Anyway, after that, it asked me to install firmware, which passed pretty painlessly. Then you have to give the app all the usual permissions to access functions on your device, or at least it does on my Samsung S9. Your device and settings might be different. And finally, the app kicks in and immediately I felt like I was ready to start shooting some smooth gimbal shots. But if you're interested, the app first runs through some more hints and tips. You can see it's in portrait mode, but you can easily switch to landscape by double tapping the M button. You can also simply move the phone with your hand and it will click from one position to the other. And by the way, triple tapping the M button positions the phone so you can unmount it easier. Once you have your smartphone connected, you can now use the record button to activate recording without touching your smartphone. At the front of the handle is a trigger. Holding this trigger down will lock the position of the phone. So when you move your hand around, the phone will remain facing in the same direction. Double tap the trigger to recenter your smartphone and triple tap the trigger to switch from front to rear camera. Currently, you can't actually do this whilst you're recording, unfortunately. Double tap and holding the trigger will activate sport mode. And when you're in sport mode, the gimbal will respond faster to your movements. Releasing the trigger will then release the sport mode and you'll go back to the normal mode. The joystick allows you to adjust the position of the phone without actually touching the phone. So you can use the joystick while recording to create some smooth pans and tilts. I was curious if the joystick had speed sensitivity or whether it was simply an on off switch for tilting and panning. Turns out it does have speed sensitivity. So if you push the joystick very gently, you get a nice steady slow camera movement. If you simply push it as far as it can go, the movement is much quicker. Uh, by the way, if you go into the app, you can actually adjust the sensitivity of this with a the setting there. The slider at the side of the gimbal handle allows you to zoom in and out. Personally, I almost never use zoom as my device only has digital zoom, which obviously reduces quality. But those of you with optical zoom can probably make better use of this feature. Active track, aim at the object you wish the camera to lock onto. Click the trigger once to lock onto that object. A green box appears around the object. Alternatively, you can draw a finger across the screen to create the box that way. Now, when the camera moves, the gimbal will attempt to keep the object in frame. Or if the gimbal is stationary and the object moves, the gimbal moves the camera to follow the object as best it can. For any camera to track an object, it needs to understand what it's supposed to track. But of course, tracking can fail if the object becomes unrecognizable to the camera. For example, if the object changes angle or lighting too much during the shot. If the camera is tracking your face and you turn your face away from the camera, it might lose track because what you told it to track is no longer visible to it. In addition, the more clearly defined the object is from the background, the easier it will be for the camera to track it. Gesture control allows you to signal to your smartphone to take a picture or start recording. You can also use it if you're filming yourself and you want to start active tracking. With the app on, tap the gesture control icon. Now toggle on gesture control. You have two options, follow and shoot, which allows you to start active tracking and shoot only, which allows you to take a picture or start shooting video, but no tracking. 
with gesture control on, make sure you are in frame and now gesture with the palm of your hand or make a V sign. After a few seconds, the camera will take a picture. The gimbal will track your face to keep you positioned in the picture. When in video mode, when you make a gesture, video starts recording. When in photo mode, you make a gesture, palm or V gesture, and it takes a picture. Story mode allows you to quickly create videos for social media stories, or if you simply want to create a little clip made up of four shots. With story mode, you don't have to worry about cutting shots together manually, as story mode automatically edits it for you. But it doesn't just edit, What's also fun is it adds a preset gimbal move to the shot. When you select story mode, top right, pink, purple button, the DJI Mimo app will bring up a series of templates to choose from. Each template creates a particular style for your finished video and it plays you a little demo of each. So you can choose now start recording. You give an account in and the video effect begins. At the bottom of the screen, you can see four boxes containing the lengths of the shots it will ask you to shoot. In this case, there are four shots to be captured. Go through each shot and at the end, the app will cut together a final video based on those shots. Now, when I first saw this, my initial reaction was gimmick. Maybe it's fun, but not for a serious filmmaker. But actually, when I was teaching smartphone filmmaking at university, one of the exercises was to shoot short clips and use a free online editor to cut them together. The rule was each shot should be no more than three seconds long when edited. The idea is to get students to start thinking in terms of shots, where each shot has a function, as opposed to swinging the camera around uh, and having your edit contain long, boring takes. When you have only two or three seconds for each shot, it forces you to think more about that shot. It really focuses your mind to think about what you're pointing the camera at. And for beginners, that is a brilliant way to learn filmmaking. Having a mini tripod to attach to the base of the gimbal is really recommended. Now, when I purchased this gimbal from Amazon, to buy it with the mini tripod would have cost another, I think, £20, although that would have included a carry case too. Honestly, I didn't need the carry case either. So instead, I bought this Ulanzi mini tripod, which has an extending pole, and this cost me only £16, so actually less than the one that comes with the DJI. And actually, you can get a simple mini tripod legs for about eight pounds. The Filmic Pro camera app has integration with quite a few gimbals, such as the Gion Smooth 4, Free Fly Movie Camera Robot, as well as DJI's Osmo Mobile 2 and Osmo Mobile 1. Now, when this gimbal first came out, I think many were thinking Osmo 1 and 2 are supported, so surely Osmo 3 will be too but many months after release, there's still no integration with Filmic Pro. This means you can't use the buttons and joystick to control features in Filmic Pro. Therefore, if you want to use the record or the zoom button rather than using the screen, you'll need to use the DJI app. The DJI Mimo app is pretty limited when it comes to manual control of your camera. Everything is auto, basically. And my only option, for example, is to shoot 30 frames per second. I don't get 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. Uh, Filmic Pro even allows me to go up to 240 frames per second. However, I do get a choice of resolutions, um, as you can see. Of course, you can still use Filmic Pro with the gimbal or another camera app. Now, this little hole here at the side, this is for attaching counterweights should you need them. If you're using, for example, an additional lens or a filter or any other attachment that you want to put onto the smartphone, you might need a counterweight. Otherwise, your phone won't be balanced in the gimbal and this will cause extra wear or it simply won't work at all. 
So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, if you found it useful, please like and subscribe. It really does help and I much appreciate it. I thank everybody. We've got an incredible number of uh, subscribers now. Only been really pushing the YouTube channel for about six months and we've already almost at 8,000. So please do subscribe and we've got plenty more exciting and interesting, informative, educational videos coming up. And also, if you want to hang around for the bonus content of this video, Keep watching and see you in the next video. More information is being released about last night's dramatic cryptocurrency heist. A gang of at least four people are involved in the theft of Bitcoin said to be worth one and a half million dollars. Police say the gang are armed and if spotted should not be a pro- How's life? The drive's empty. And the crypto in that wallet is worthless!